Wow, what a glorious welcome. Thanks so much. By the way, I am Nick and the dog is Joop, just for that you know. He's not doing the presentation today. I want to change the world. I want to do something better with my life, a dream of a successful world, although I hate the word successful. I absolutely hate that word because it represents everything that I was before my accident. I defined successful as being or having a good career, a big car, a big salary, a big house in Amsterdam, and I had it all, although I had none of them. I'm not going to tell you here today how to be successful. There is no definition of success. Nobody can tell you how to be successful. There's only one person in the world that can explain to you or tell you how to be happy, how to live a meaningful life. And that one person is yourself. I needed a very big, literally, crash to realize that. It's um, the summer of 2010. And uh, as I wake up, everything is dark, confused. I have absolutely no idea where I am, who I am, or what just happened. Because after a 16-hour workday, I, with some alcoholic beverages, I decided at 3 a.m. in the morning to step on my motorbike. And as I wake up, I'm alone, alone with the stars. It's a very clear night, actually. And I start counting the stars. I'm so terrified to fall asleep. In the first turn, I drove straight forward. I crashed with my bike, flew 10 meters into the air, into a rural country. And I landed with my back on the sideway. And nobody knew where I was or what just happened. There's this one voice in my head that shouts, Nick, all your dreams are ending now. It's over. And because I start panicking, I start counting the stars. But I lose that battle. And between 3 a.m. in the morning and 6 a.m. in the morning, I fell asleep and I wake up and I fell asleep and I wake up. And as I'm feeling around me, it's kind of cold. And I realize, how can it happen? It's summer. It's wet. And I'm like, hey, it didn't rain today. And later on, I learn that it's just a big portion of my own blood. And at 6 o'clock in the morning, I woke up and there's a voice in my head that shouts, Nick, you really start to do something now. Act, do something. And with my right hand, I grab my cell phone out of my left pocket and I dial 112, which is our emergency service number in the Netherlands. But I still don't, I don't know who I am or what I am or what just happened. The only thing that I can't remember or that I can remember is the cell phone number from my father. Because when we were 10 years old, we needed to remind, to remember that number, 0651579. I won't repeat the number out here. And I think I shouted it for about 10 to 30 times to the lady on the phone. Locate my phone, because that was something that I saw on television series. But because I am in a rural country, the area narrows down to about 3Ks, and it takes them about 45 minutes with seven police cars and four motorbikes to find me on the side of the road, and red and blue lights stop in front of me, and a man and a woman step out. And the man shouts in his radio, we found him. And until this very day, I can't see an ambulance without being moved. They blocked the highway, they drive me into the emergency room in Amsterdam. My brothers and sisters are there. I'm lying in a bed, and I think I am in an emergency room, and there was a big man with a white coat stepping into the room. 
and explains, Monique, you have a spinal cord injury and you're paralyzed from chest down. Now this is the, the hard part of today. There's a very good reason that I'm telling you actually this story. I can actually tell this story five days a week. I work as a public speaker and for five days in a week I can tell this story. And I was actually completely rewriting my TEDx this morning because I was just wondering what do I want to tell these students today? What do I want them to remember? What do I want them to take home with them? It's your own choose, your own choice to find happiness in your life. And I wish, because it's only eight years ago that I was sitting right in the same seats as you are, I wish I realized that a little bit more. I wish I realized that I didn't knew or didn't need a big crash to be happy. After eight months in rehab, I uh, completely fell in love with my occupational therapist. Which is, um, which is very unethical, I know, but it's very nice as well. And it makes a good story on a birthday, right? Thank you, spinal cord injury. After 12 months, we were married. Thank you, spinal cord injury. About 12 months ago, Puck and Josephine were born. Thank you, spinal cord injury. The reason that I'm looking a little bit sad today is that with Puck and Josephine, I got my mother-in-law in my house as well. <laughs> um, but I can only make the joke here, right? That's, that's our secret as well. But for the first time in my life, it feels like I can determine my own success. I can determine my own happiness in my life. For the first time in my life, I can make that decision, and so can you. If that's the only thing that you will remember today, then I'm a happy man, and I'm lucky. And today I'm lucky because I'm invited to this TEDx in this world-famous city of Leeuwarden. I can die happy now. <laughs> Happiness is a choice. I celebrate my spinal cord injury every day of every year. On the 16th of June, <coughs> my parents and all my friends come together in my house, in our house, in Hilversum. And we open up the champagne because 364 days a year, it is a hassle. It is a hard life. But can I celebrate it one day here as well? It's a half full or a half empty cup, right? I want you to do the same. Count your blessings. I need this tablet all the time to remind my story. And as I told you, I. I can tell this story five days a week, but every day I forget my story as well because the brain damage was so severe that I tend to forget everything that I see or what I learned, which is a good thing because most of the things that I learned in school weren't good anyway. But that's an, uh, an art story. I want you to pursue happiness. We can't always influence what happens to our lives, right? But we can choose how to deal with it. Happiness is a choice in our society. Live your life like it's the last minute and to be honest, it's not a good day today. It takes me 37 pills a day to keep the pain under control. 37 pills. I slept in your hotel last night and this morning, the seat which I'm taking a shower under broke down. And I told you I can't move the rest of my body anymore, so I fell down on the ground and as I'm laying there naked, I'm trying to pull the emergency cord which wasn't working. And I'm like, shit, and now I have to talk to 100 students as well with a smile on my face and I'm lying there on the floor naked, alone, and I have absolutely no clue what I can do. That's how my day started this morning. And then there are two choices. And the first choice that was in my head, like Nick, screw it, screw the whole TEDx. I'm done for today. I'm leaving, I'm going home. I'm going to my bed, close the curtains, take the sheets over my head. It's over for today. 
And it was my first decision as well. I was actually on my way to my car this morning. And there was another decision that had to be made as well. I can stay and try to find some people that can cheer me up or go outside and enjoy the sun because it is a beautiful day today, right? And luckily today I managed to make the second choice. And now I'm here sitting in front of you. I've got 20 minutes of energy today. It's not a joke. It's not something that I come up with, but I only have 20 minutes today. And that 20 minutes are yours. Because I want to make the world a better place. I want to live in a world, I want my children to live in a world in which we're more open, more friendly, more committed to each other. And that's my goal here today with you. The 20 minutes of energy that I've got are exactly the same for you. And I want you to start realize that you can only use your energy once. So if you have a boring teacher, walk out of the room. It's not worth your time. I'm absolutely serious about that. Some people are getting really nervous here on my left hand side. <laughs> but I'm absolutely serious about it. You can only live your life once, right? That's the choice. And it doesn't mean that I'm able to do this every day. Because I probably managed to do this five days a week now, but not six or not seven. The other two days I'm lying on my sheets. Or I'm crying because the pain is too severe. But already five days a week it works out. Happiness is a choice. And if I can do that with the 10% of my body, which is still working, so can you, right? So can you. It's just a choice that you can make. If you remember that sentence for today, I had a good 20 minutes. And I had a good day. If I could start over, I wouldn't change anything. Absolutely nothing. You see some guys looking at, wow, I would do the same if I had a wife like that, right? <laughs> hey. And you're absolutely right, but she's mine. <laughs> because in the last two weeks I was hospitalized again. The last two weeks I woke up in a bad dream and I swallowed my first nine pills of the day. And it was the same actually yesterday. That's how my day starts. I jump onto my shower chair, as I like, my pooping chair, how I like to call it. And I drive into the bathroom, take a shower, go back, and I'm in an incredibly amount of pain because it takes a while before everything starts working. I jump onto bed, I dress myself, jump back into my wheelchair, and that's how my day starts. And that's not a smart thing to do, because as I said, there were 100 students that were waiting for me, and I actually found a trick how to start my day again or over. Whenever I wake up in this mood and I can't win the pain on that day, I go to a gas station. I actually don't really go to a gas station, I go to Ali. And I live in Hilversum and I have absolutely no idea which brand it is or which gas station it is. I just know that Ali is work over there. And I pull myself in my van because I have this beautiful 18 van but I'm still in a lot of pain and I can't win this this day and I drive up to Ali and before I enter his gas station I blink my headlights twice and behind 50 meters behind his office he's giving me the sign hey Nick I saw you because he helps me putting gas in my car all the time and he walks out I open my window. Hi, hey, Nick, Bucks, how are you? Mr. Handicapped Man. <laughs> That's a little bit how Ali and I communicate. And like, Ali, just, just please fill up the car. And he's like, was diesel, right? Yes, please. And he starts filling up the car and he says, Nick, this is not your day today, eh? What's wrong? And I'm like, come on, Ali, I can't, I can't win this day. I'm just in too much pain today. And he looks at the meter and he says, Nick, there's only five liters going into your car. And I'm like, Ali, I'm not here to fill up my car. I'm just here to 
become a little bit happy today. He's like, oh, why didn't you say so? <laughs> for how long are you in your wheelchair now? I'm like, for about six years now. I would probably change doctor if I were you. That's a little bit the humor that Ali and I have. And then he walks back to his office and he kicks against my front tires twice. I have absolutely no idea why he's doing that all the time. But he's probably, I think he's trying to, to locate my tire pressure at that moment. And he walks back and he says, Nick, cup of coffee on the go? I said, yes, please. Black, no milk, no sugar, right? I said, yeah, thank you. And I give him my pin number. I don't know if that's smart, but I give him my number. <laughs> and, and then he comes back with the bill, a cup of coffee, and the Red Bull. And he says, Nick, Red Bull helps against everything. <laughs> and I step into my car, and I drive up to Leeuwarden with a smile on my face. Dear people, being happy is not something that you have to be able to do. Oh, only putting yourself. You can ask for help. If that's something that you would remind for today, I have a happy and good day. Spend 100% of your time and of your energy on things that make you happy, to make the world a little bit better, because your time is limited just the same as mine. Amaze people, chase your dreams, and once in a while, become an Ali. Thank you so much for your attention. Thanks a lot. Yippee.